Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, click the like button, ring the bell, check out our social media. We really appreciate it. Uh, today on the podcast, we have singer-songwriter, frontman for the Bones, Mr. Patrick Vitaliano. Oh, so you want to fight me now? I do. <laughs> Absolutely, man. We'll get the uh, gloves out upstairs, man. We'll start a fucking boxing match on this Why thing. wait? Yeah, I dig it. How are you doing today, Patrick? I have no idea. It's yeah. early. It's, it is uh, early. I was late, and it's still early. <laughs> Sorry for being late. You live way the fuck out there. Yeah, we just moved, man. You know, we moved uh, beginning of the year out to this uh, beautiful new house. We really like it, but it is. We're, we're kind of far southwest uh, by the mountains. Did you but, move closer or further? From where you were, uh, we were we were kind of uh, like central South area Silverado Ranch and uh, like right off the freeway, so it was convenient there. But uh, yeah, it's out southwest with uh, Blue Diamond Road right here. It, it actually doesn't take that long to get anywhere still, and it's still about thirty minutes to get Central Strip. Yeah, I That's left myself bad. fifteen and uh, oh yeah, took thirty five. Yeah, it takes about thirty to get out here for sure, man. You know, it's uh. The desert, man, it's expanding. It's growing. And they're doing all kinds of crazy uh, construction up the road still. And uh, I know they're expanding out towards Red Rock and stuff like that. So it's been, uh, I don't know, it's getting bigger and bigger out here in Vegas. They're paving the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Last time I was out here, when we first got here, uh, we did a lot with... Uh, Ed Roman, and that's that house. His his house is not too far from here. Yeah, right. Actually, uh, Michael T. Ross lives in that house now. Right on. Yeah, I was just over here talking about showing me some videos he was shooting out there in the desert, and that's a crazy house, man. Have you been there? I have been Good there. Good God, Would, were you were you there around Ed time too? When you when his toys and collection was there? His collection of <sighs> yeah, he had so many friggin' guitars. It was just aisles of guitars that you had to walk through like a maze to get around anywhere in his house. But movie props, too. He had all oh, these yeah. great toys and Star Trek phasers and all this crazy stuff. Yeah, he had some pretty dope lightsabers, I remember. And then uh, and then he took me into his little armory, and it was like a billion guns. Wow, I did not see that. No? No. Oh, man. He must have liked you more. It was, uh, well, you know, I, t- <laughs> <laughs> I like guns, you know, and uh, I don't know how it came up, but we started talking about guns and uh it was like uh, one of those freaking rooms in the Matrix or like Boondock Saints where it's just like guns on the walls and everywhere. And then you couldn't go in it because the floor was just piled with rifles. And it was just like, it was fucking insane. Like the guy was preparing a militia or something like that. Man. Who knows that he wasn't? Yeah. The I guitars mean, were a fucking front. Dude. Never seen such a huge collection, man. And I got some, I got some crazy rednecks in my family who like to collect weapons and everything but that was an, an intense intense collection of weaponry do you have but, a room like that here uh no no i don't have a room like that here i wish i had a room like that that'd be amazing like I don't the think... one off of stewie's bedroom oh yeah exactly exactly no i no i don't unfortunately have a room like that uh, in my house uh you know i'm an american i uh i i take advantage of my constitutional rights that's for sure so where where's the shot? See, my arm is going up and down. This is the I, shot right here. Oh yeah, I, I want it. I'm petting your dog. I just don't want anybody <laughs> to think that I'm masturbating under the table. We know you're masturbating under the table. That's for sure. Now, uh, little Miss Daphne's in the room with us today. She's spectacular. She's a love bug, man. I am. I'm. I'm enamored. Oh yeah, we uh we just give her all the love in the world, and she goes around and gives it back to everybody tenfold, man. What a great what a great animal. She's you're a fantastic beautiful, puppy. Miss Daphne. Maybe we'll get her to jump up on a lap here sooner or later. Some We'll get some camera shots of the doggy. We'll throw her on but, the table. Right? Yeah, we'll throw her on the table. <laughs> She'll love that. Give her a mic. Uh, but yeah, no, she's uh, she won't stop, too. Once you start petting her, she's going to she's gonna keep nudging that arm of yours until, uh, until you keep petting her. Uh, you're in for it now, man. You, 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 you done did it. So you got some dogs? I have two new dogs, two new bulldog puppies. Oh my God! Kevin and Owen, and they're fucking terrorists. Yeah. You know, in a good way. That you know, they're, they're the best possible terrorists you could ever have, like in your home and in your bed. But fucking terrorists. <laughs> I've, you know, we as a as a couple, we had a puppy. We had a mastiff puppy when we first got together. Uh, he died at two hundred and four pounds. Great dog. Then we had a rescue a bulldog. Uh, he was. 
really, really dangerous. Like he was on death row. It took him years to start, you know, trusting and becoming chill. But his, he only had one speed, which was basically stop. You know, he would, he would move to eat and fart and whatnot. But, uh, but he passed, and we, we ended up getting two bulldog puppies. And this is a re-education on uh, having a puppy. That's, that's a different thing. Oh yeah, and they're a little having more two. Uh, dependent uh, dependent on you, right? Yeah, we're used to slow slow pace with bulldogs, but these two puppies are full fucking on. I think I found a shot of your puppies here. Oh, ah, Kevin and Owen. Yeah, they're my awesome. riding buddies. Those are adorable uh, bulldogs, man. Those are their their coffees. <laughs> Mine, I had to put in the door. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, the color on the the one in the passenger seat there that was that's pretty. You don't see that color too often. He's uh, so we went down. Uh, we had a friend in Texas who, uh, who who was breeding. They were having their first litter. So my wife says, "Buy that black and white one. It's beautiful." Uh, can we earmark him? So we went down to buy Kevin. Right? He was uh, he was he was what we went for. And Owen, it, his name is Owen because he was Kevin's simple. Like, you know, remember Danny DeVito uh, yeah. from Throw Mama from the tw- Train? He was Owen. Uh, but it's more accurate when you say, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Dan- Danny DeVito and twins. Owen is, you know, he's, he's that one. He was, <laughs> he was Kevin's, like, semi-retarded brother. What are we doing? And uh, he's uh, just, he, he hit every branch on the way down uh, from the problem tree. So, <laughs> but they were inseparable. So we, we went for one. We ended up with two. That's fantastic, man. It's always good to keep the uh, the pups together, you know, especially when they're family like that. They're good dudes. Yeah. For bad dudes. They're for good bad dudes. for good dudes. The best uh, of the worst. Yeah. Yeah, and the bulldogs, uh, like my friend just had um, some complications with his bulldog and it ended up being uh, a little expensive. I know sometimes they can get uh, out of control with the, the their specific, their head and their, their small back end, you know, like that. They're kind of a weird animal. Oh, and it's clocking in at three times the vet bills that Kevin is clocking in at. So yeah. You're dead right. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I always wanted a bulldog. Well, and uh, Get three. Get three, yeah. <laughs> The, the the vet pills are what scare me about the bulldog the most, man. Whatever's worth doing is worth yeah. overdoing. Yeah, no, nah, I I can't uh, I can't disagree with that, man. I am uh, an overachiever myself. I always take things a little too far. Anytime I invest my time in something, you know. You gotta. Yeah, which is like what I'm doing here, man. Or else you'll never know. This yeah. room is nuts. Thank you, man. Yeah. I mean, in a good way. It's uh. But you spent like my baby in here, man. You spent like all your money. Yeah, I did spend all my money on on gear and then other people's money. There's just all the money in, on earth is in this room. Yeah, it's uh it's a lot of shit, man. Yeah, and I got the this whole side's just audio production, this whole side's video production and uh you know, all the controllers in the middle and everything and the three screen thing is spectacular. Yeah. I had to have it, man. I had to have it. And there's a the the one underneath, I got the Raven MTI. So there's a uh actual touchscreen interface for Pro Tools as well, so you can do all your plugins and your fader movement and everything like that with the touchscreen. I think it just moved. <laughs> yeah, it's my baby, though, man. Oh, I uh, you, Daphne. Can you see uh, Daphne? Can we see Daphne? I don't know if we can see her or not. She's going to... Oh, there she is. You can see her a little bit there in the corner. All right, so I've redeemed myself so everybody yep. knows, everybody what, knows. <laughs> what I was not doing under the table. All right. Uh, yeah. She'll she'll just keep nuzzling you the whole freaking show, man. That was important to me to make that dis- differentiation. <laughs> so when I whip it out later, they know that that was supposed to happen and this was not, you know. <laughs> it's important to we'll masturbate both, we'll when you're supposed doing to this, masturbate. The whole show. <laughs> Getting it like this, baby. Uh, that's funny, man. So... Well, yeah, man. Uh, so why don't we talk about some of the actual stuff uh, that you do instead of just bullshitting. I know you have uh, a new record coming out, man. Uh, the Ruin Your Rock Show Volume 2. Just came out. Oh, okay. Just came out. Yep. And, it's a, and it's a spectacularly cheesy live record. Uh, are you familiar with Ruin Your Rock Show 1? Uh, I don't know if I am or not. I know I've done, I've listened to some of your records from the Bones and I really enjoy everything you do with that, but uh, I don't remember if I listened to the first one. Did you, when when did you do Ruin Your Rock Show Volume 1? Well, I brought a bevy of visual aids. Let me, let me Uh, grab this bag. Oh, visual aids. So, uh, not, not to be confused with 
traditional aids. Uh, <laughs> visual aids are, are more of an age that you want. Uh, uh, so, Ruin Your Rock Show 1. So, uh, we're an original band, and we make original records, and we're very proud of that. But our, our indulgence, if you will, is to do, like, the world's gayest pop songs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's just a fun thing. It's a diversion that we do. Uh, but as a songwriter, like, I, I always said to myself, this is so fun to do in a live show, but I can't, like... I, I, I can't bring myself to record a cover with a straight face, yeah. right? So we, we, we decided, let's, let's do live records of nothing but covers, right? And uh, so Ruin Your Rock Show 1. Camera uh, right here. But this oh. came out in, it's so small and it's a little dark, I can't really read it, but I'm going to guess probably came out around 2015, 2016. Okay, I probably have heard that one then. So it's got, uh, got a bunch of fun stuff on it. So we nice. just... We just, uh, Ruin Your Rock Show 2 is an extension of that. Like, even gayer songs uh, <laughs> done even heavier. It's like this, it's like this tongue-in-cheek thing. You know how, like, you can play a Slayer song uh, by a campfire with an acoustic guitar if you dumb it down to its basal chords, right? So yeah. a- anything can be a campfire song, right? So, so because of that, you, you expound on that, and there's a lot of great great writing and great melodies that were unfortunately victims of the pop production of the 80s right oh, you know yeah. so it's this it's it's this it's this sort of secret tongue in cheek thing we do to try to get that slayer fan in the front row to bang his head to dancing queen i mean that's that's <laughs> you, you, that's the best way to say it is when you have all your uh, die hard rockers rocking out to fucking abba you know you've done your job and that's what ruin your rock show and ruin your rock show too is about that's amazing so i don't have physical copies of two yet it came out digitally about a week ago oh, okay yeah and you got stuff like i want candy on here careless whisper a science fiction double features, yes. a Rocky Horror Picture From Show. From Rocky Horror, yeah, that's fantastic. So when we do a she when bopped. we do a covers record. Uh, and and the new one is live from the apocalypse. We're calling it right. It's uh, it's 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 not even live. You know, like you, remember when remember when the uh, the shit came out about hmm, Kiss Alive Two was faked. Wait a minute, that can't be true. You know, but the, all, n- since since that came out and people got over the revelation and the shock and. <gasps> You know, it's still a great fucking record. So, oh yeah. So what we tried to do was we tried to go into the studio and make it as live as possible. I shouldn't I shouldn't be dishing this dirt, but uh, no, what, whatever. It's so 2021, man, nothing's real anymore. <laughs> Everything's fake and auto tuned and Pro Tools all to hell. Yeah. So robots played the whole record. So no, <laughs> we, we went and, and, and we and we did everything as true to form as possible. We we played every song live three times you know and when I, I left most of the mistakes in but in anything that's really train wrecky you don't want to be immortalized like that mm. so you might fly in apart from another take and then we took the most ridiculous crowd sounds I think we sampled like Oasis at, at Wembley for this one oh, yeah. and mixed it with like some of the Who's live records sound <laughs> live crowd sounds and just blended it all together so it's really uh... bombastic and over the top and it's fun as fucking hell that's awesome. What a great thing to mix the multiple crowd sounds like that together. I've done that on live albums where we, we capture the band live and then it's not it wasn't live enough for the band in the in the post production and we end up like taking additional crowd noise and are like doubling up their crowd noise and doing all kinds of shit to make it sound like there was a thousand people in a 200 seat room yeah yeah the the, the trick is uh we want you to know it's fake it's yeah. so cheesy that you know you know when something goes oh are, are they faking it oh man they're faking it oh they're really this is so cheesy it's fucking awesome yeah you know so you got to come f- full circle where you know where, where, where it goes past the point of eh, you shouldn't have done that and now you really should should have done that that's fantastic <laughs> that's amazing i look forward to hearing that and that's uh what was that again the what the, what was the album again the apocalypse ruin your rock show 2 uh-huh. is live from the apocalypse live from the apocalypse that's we, what it we is. started recording that you know as soon as COVID hit and there was nothing to do and then we were going to put it we were going to put it out last summer and then you're like why do you it's 2020 why do anything so we fucking sat on it for a fucking year 
you know. And then uh, I w- wanted it to be a summer record because uh, the the stuff on the on the new record is uh, a lot of Duran Duran and really really crazy crazy shit that we grew up on. Uh, so we've been calling it that. Like the tagline is, "This is the soundtrack to your midlife crisis." Because everybody <laughs> our age, you know, uh, who grew up with those songs, is now going through their midlife crisis. So buy a fucking convertible, put this record on. Let me be the soundtrack to your fucking midlife crisis. If I could, if if I could make that happen, I would die a happy man. That's a beautiful concept, man. I think I found a, I found the cover on Instagram there yes. as well. Or when you're a rock show, volume two, live from the apocalypse. <laughs> it should be in everybody's convertible. And then, ladies, while your husband's out sowing his wild oats, uh, there's always the pool boy. <laughs> you know, you too can put this record on. Uh, that's fantastic. And bang the pool boy. I love it, man. Yeah, and you got some great people in your band as well, man. I mean, you got uh, Sean Coos, and you got Jeff Duncan. And also, is that Jeff Duncan's brother in the band, too? Or? So Jeff Duncan's brother played with us for a long time. Uh, Sean Duncan, love that guy to death. Uh, it, it became a little prohibitive. He lives in California. Yeah. You know, so coming out and going back all the time, you know, because nobody pays for music in Vegas, you know. So yeah. uh, best best you can hope for is walk away with 100, 150 in your pocket. And uh, and I understand, you know, that guy's got to pay a mortgage. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, Sean McKee played on this record. Oh, what uh, a fantastic drummer! He's really good, yeah, and he's been uh, and he's been playing the live shows lately. Oh, okay. Well, you guys got a super group going on. Yeah, man. I wouldn't call it a super group. I don't know. That's a lot of that's a lot of talent for one band, man. <laughs> bunch, bu- bunch of dicks. Um, <laughs> but the, the 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 premise behind the bones is uh, everybody tours, right, Jeff? does the Armored Saint thing. He, he does the DC4 thing. Uh, and then on top of that, he's got his own band called Electric Dynamite, right? So, so awesome he's too. just always either on the road or busy with something. Coos is in literally every band in Las Vegas and most most bands in the United States. <laughs> if you so grew nice. up with an 80s or 90s band, the yeah. current touring of any, version of any of those bands, Sean Coos is a member of, right? Yeah. He plays like five gigs a day, right? It's and crazy. Then, and McKee does the Stony Curtis thing, and he's playing with Stacey Blades, I believe, crashing Wayward. Right? No, really. Is yeah. That what he's so, doing? so every, every and and you know, I up. I work for Kiss and they tour fucking constantly. Uh, so everybody everybody does a lot of things. So Vegas, uh, when the when everybody's in Vegas and the phone rings and we could all get together, that's when we do a Bones gig. Right? That's awesome. So the whole the whole concept is it's everybody's side project. You know, <laughs> it's it's we I think we've rehearsed five times ever. Right, everything is just you know learn the shit and we'll just fucking wing it. Right, and it's really fun that way. It's not a big commitment for anybody, and we just you know if everybody's in town and somebody has somebody offers us a show, are you around? Are you around? Are you yeah? Let's do a show, and that's really how we approach it. That's fantastic, and it's definitely worth seeing. I really uh, like. I just love when you guys play, man. It's a super it's a fun show. show. Yeah, it's a shit show. It's then you guys start doing all these ridiculous covers, and your originals are fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I love them, man. And uh, and but the show in general, the live show, is where it's at. Like you guys really bring it and put on a great piece of entertainment for everybody to enjoy their night too. It's it's sloppy, but it's a it's a good time. I hope that translates. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, it definitely translates whenever I've seen you guys perform. I mean, we could be, you know, practiced and polished, but where's the fun in that? That's not what this is. Yeah. There's a place for that. Go watch Rush. <laughs> then come back. <laughs> come back when you want to have a whiskey and, um, you know, let your hair down. Yeah. And so you mentioned uh, touring around with Kiss. I know you're uh, you're Gene Simmons, uh, bitch. Shar- yeah, Sharpie bitch, right? Is how you put it uh, many times in the past. Yeah. Uh, what, you want to tell anything about that? I don't know what what kind of stories you can tell, but can't tell most. Yeah. Uh, but I can give you the bones. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, that was not a pun or a, <laughs> or a segue of any kind. Unintentional. Um, so he's uh, he's. Fairly genius, uh, like everybody knows. But you know, like a guitar player will, uh, you know, we'll go out. You're, you're a bass player. You'll go out if if you toured. You probably bring your favorite bass and your and your backup. A, you know, a guitar player might bring three or four of his favorite instruments. She never plays the same thing twice, right? We literally sell them off his body. It's a brilliant, brilliant model. We'll we'll tour with a, a section of a truck. 
and just peel them off, you know, because he, he, he's smart enough to know, uh, geez, if people want to meet me and it was affordable, uh, there would be lines out the door for the rest of my life and the lives of my or life of my children's children. Uh, you know, so I, there would be no free time if it was affordable to meet Gene Simmons. So what he did was, he says, if, if you want to meet Gene Simmons, uh, you have to purchase one of my bass guitars. And they're not replicas. They're, they're his real instruments. He just orders them by the hundreds, right? That's brilliant, amazing. you know. So, so it's a brilliant model. You get you you get one of Gene Simmons' actual instruments, not a replica. Uh, he plays it after the show. He gives it to you. You know, you take pictures with him. He signs it over to you, and you own you know a piece of history at that point. And the price point is high, but you know that's because he's only got so much time. He's got seventy two. Wow, he'll well, be seventy two in like three weeks. God, he's 72? Yes. That's insane. He's in better shape than me, that motherfucker. Yeah. I hate right? that. My dad's turning 70. He's falling apart, man. He's in bed all the time. I'm 51 and I'm falling <laughs> apart. <laughs> Fuck you, Gene Simmons. Oh, uh, yeah. I worked with, uh, who was it? It was Don Henley. And he's fucking up there, too. He's in his 70s. And the dude is in phenomenal shape. I hate that. And it blew my mind. I was like, you're not in your, there's no way you're in your freaking 70s, man. But I guess he's got, you know, like I'm sure Gene does too, personal trainer and a nutritionist and a personal chef and all these things that, you know, having that kind of money and that level of success affords you to be able to just like have all these people just constantly taking care of your body and pushing you in the right direction. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he's never, never done drugs, never done, you know, never had a drink or yeah, you know, that's maybe right, one, huh? but he's not, he doesn't, you know, he's no, very straight I don't think edge. he's ever, right? Like no, he's, never. he's like super proud of the fact that he's never touched anything. Yeah. And he'll, he'll be the first to tell you, that's why I'm in better shape than you at you know, <laughs> the age of your dad. He's, he's not wrong, man. You no, know, that definitely stuff definitely not tears wrong. your body apart. Mm. Oh, that's cool, man. But he's cool as fuck. You know, he's just, he's, he's a, he's a down to earth dude, but because he's worth half a billion dollars, there's sort of a disconnect, right? Yeah. You know, so, so like you'll have a real down to earth, uh, conversation. Um, and then I'll give you an example. Ah, I shouldn't be dishing dirt. Um, you know, he lives here now. Does he? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm sure we'll see him out at the clubs. And you will, because he, you know, he's he's no bodyguards. He just, you know, he'll just he'll just go anywhere. But, uh, but we do business with him, and he lives in Vegas, so it's convenient, you know, to get together. So, uh, for the first time, you know, he's only lived here for a couple of months. So for the first time, he actually stopped by our house, which is fucking weird and surreal. And you're like, whoa, all right, okay. And and he's walking around. This is the disconnect, right? Uh, he's like, wow, this is a great place. And he's like, did you buy this? And my wife is like, yeah, yeah, we bought it. Oh, what'd you pay? And she said, uh, well, we paid, you know, probably around three-ish, but we put a lot of work into it, you know. That was four or five years ago. It's probably worth five now. And he went, five million, that's great. And she's like, no, not five million. <laughs> but yeah. that's, the, that's the disconnect, because houses yeah. cost, you know, three to five million, I guess. Yeah. You know, but Houses it, that he buys. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, that's funny, man. Yeah, it's... Um, what was I? I was listening to John Mulaney talk about writing a spoof song on SNL with uh, with Keith Richard or uh, not Keith Mick Jagger. Really? And he was just like, yeah. He's telling the joke about he just says Diet Coke and someone just the Diet Cokes just appear in his hand. And he goes, the guy's just fucking out there, man. You know, whenever he's uh, his his life has been to be on a stage and everyone's just screaming about how much they love you. Like every other day of your life, you know, like that has to fucking do something to your ego and your personality, man. It can't not. Yeah. How do you, you can't go through that, you know, for 30, 40 years and not be changed by it forever. Of course not. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're not the same people we were in our twenties, you know, okay. and we have not achieved 2% <laughs> of what some of these, some of these people have achieved. Yeah. You know? I know. I, uh, what was, I was listening to Miley Cyrus talk about the the high that she gets on stage and I how love her. I do too. I think she's fantastic. Uh, yeah, just like her her journey through life is such a trip. You know what a what a uh, fucking adventure that chick's been on, especially she's for powerful too. Yeah, she's just a powerful. She comes across as you know a commanding presence. Yeah. 
No, which she is, weird is for a Disney kid. I know. Well, she had to fight her way out of that. Mm-hmm. You know, she started going like, "I'm a fucking woman." You know, I have I have sexuality, and like, I'm a human being. I'm not this puppet from the Disney Channel. You know, and she had to really fight for that. You so know, really I, hard. I wasn't a. I wasn't a. You know, I was never a Miley fan like from the beginning where no. I started paying attention to her uh, do you remember and I don't even know if this fucking story is true you know you hear shit and, you, and, it, and it changes you know your perception on something then you find out 20 years later that never happened but I'm <laughs> going with the fact that it happened but you validated or not if you've heard this story when I started paying attention to her uh, it's when do you remember uh, Ron Jeremy did the spoof video on her her video Wrecking Ball I oh yeah. Like a re- so Ron Jeremy is like naked on a fucking wrecking ball, right? And it was really it was really funny. Apparently, and I don't know if you have like an audience that can tell you if this is true or not, but I read that she was so pissed off about that that she ran into Ron Jeremy in a public place or a restaurant or a club, walked up and punched him square in the fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, at first I'm like, well, oh, the video so is funny. She can't take a joke, but okay, uh, that's a badass. P- yeah. Punching him in the mouth in a public place. If that happened, or it didn't, that still got me paying attention to her as an empowered woman. Yeah, she's amazing, man. Yeah. She really is, and everything she does is just so strong. I mean, and keeps she, getting better. Yeah, and she was she she was uh, doing like Fourth of July over at Resorts World. And I think t- like basic seats were three hundred bucks. Like, I mean, she's just crushing it. But she was talking to the the podcast she did with Joe Rogan. She was talking about drugs and how, you know, her stint with drugs was just super unsuccessful for her because she's on stage getting these huge highs of adrenaline her whole life doing these performances and the rush that comes from performing in front of uh, tens of thousands of people all the time. She just goes, the, the fucking drugs just were never getting me there. So yeah, I just had to let it that. all go. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting thing, you know, about just like being in front of all those people constantly, that that whole existence. That's that's sort of that's sort of the path of travel with drugs in general though. Yeah. There are a handful of people that you're like, man, if it weren't for drugs, you know, but not very many. You yeah. know, there's not very many people that 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 a, that a lifetime of drugs really work out for. But no. there are a few. Yeah. You know, would we have so many great Beatles records if it weren't for <laughs> that type of experimentation? Oh, the Grateful yeah. Dead, you know, I mean, there are there are a few it works out for. Didn't work out for me. Right. Well, I think and and with like people like the the Beatles and the Grateful Dead, you know, they were doing more of the um the psychedelic experimentation right. as opposed to like say um Kurt Cobain who was addicted to heroin, you know. But Miles Davis. Yeah. Or oh, Miles, yeah, with then Miles right. Davis. Would right. Would we have so many great Miles Davis records if it weren't for heroin? Yeah, that's true. I mean, jazz in general, right? Like that's right. kind of one of those things where a lot of jazz musicians like they they hear about all these old jazz players who were addicted to heroin and they they kind of feel like they have to try that to see what the big deal is you know which unfortunately i know i know too many people that have gone down that path where they tried it just to f- advance their musical outlook on life but then it's like well now you've done heroin <laughs> <laughs> there is that get, you don't get to take that one back you know like i, I always equate um every drug to um like smoking cigarettes because a lot of people can relate to at least smoking cigarettes i haven't had a cigarette in uh in like a decade September it's a decade and wow. uh, I'm stoked about that but I'll always be a cigarette smoker right like I'll, and when I smell a cigarette or people are out having cigarettes it's in my head and like I like the smell of them you still get a pang like oh uh, I want to do that it it I I'm 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 aware of the yeah the desire that that pops up same with like whiskey you know I'm, I don't, I don't drink whiskey. either yeah and so like people are drinking around me it's like well I'll always want to do that it's not it's because I know how much I enjoy doing it and I don't do it because it's not it, it fucks me you know like I, I take it too far and uh, and I don't know when to stop and everything and then like weeks later I'm just like oh, you know man. yeah this chaotic ball of mess just Where am do, I? yeah what have I been doing what for the past couple it? of weeks yeah and so I just don't do it you know but there's always that thing and like heroin has got to be the ultimate like mess of, of your life that way where you're just like I need it I've never touched it done a lot of things uh, I've been been off of I made a commitment to my wife in 1995 when we started getting started dating she's like now nah, you, you you know you're a 
fucking disaster. Uh, I don't do any of that. So I I stopped like right then and never went back. You yeah. know, cocaine, pot, psychedelics, like a, a lot of things. Never heroin. Uh, and I and I've never really had a problem with that. Never smoked a cigarette in my life. But I do love whiskey. And uh, <laughs> at fifty one, it's you know it's weird that you're talking about uh, that that you know it, it's easier for you to do nothing than than moderation because that's sort of where I'm at right now. I was the pandemic especially, um, you know, drinking every day, and yeah. not, I don't get stupid. I don't fall down. I'm not that guy. But that's this. It still takes a toll, and you can start to feel it. My my problem is I've never had a hangover. So there's, oh, so, wow. the, so there's no consequences. I think <laughs> I have gotten really stupid. Wake, wake up the next day feeling awesome, right? So that's not necessarily a good thing, but I'm conscious <laughs> uh, of it. So it's, in the past few months, uh, I have found it easier to uh, do a zero night than to do a moderation night. So I started that about six months ago. Then it was then it was two zero nights. Uh, I'm up to currently three zero nights. There you go. And moderating on my four on nights. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm building on it. I'm conscious of it. I'm not perfect. And mm. I love whiskey. But, Dude. But I don't want to die, you know. I mean, our, mm. our, our, our organs get old and, you know, they start to fail. So I don't want that to happen. So yeah. I'm conscious of it. I'm working on it. Was that Middle Aged Man Saturday Night Live? We're working on it. Are you looking at our guts? We're working on it. Uh, that's fucking great. No, I like how you're saying that because uh, uh, that's how I've always done it too, man. I've I've led a bunch of things go in my in my life and uh, and removed that addictive tendency or, or um, uh, compulsive habit habits from my life, and that's how I do it. I do like you know, we start at one day, and then you go to two days, and then you go to three days. The second you cross over to that fourth day where you're doing more off than on, you know, it starts to really be like, well, I might as well just wrap this fucker up in a bow and call it a day. And uh, I find myself at that place right now with my vegetarianism. I've been talking about it a few times on the show. and, uh, And I started with one day a week. I won't eat meat. You know, I'm just I'm gonna put my foot down and I won't do it. And then it turned into two days and three days, as you said. And now I'm past that four day mark where I start losing track. I'm like, how long has it been since I've eaten meat? I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. We'll have a we'll have a, a burger or whatever, you know. But now I, then now I eat the burger and I'm like, that made me feel like shit. Now my now my system's not liking the meat, you know. And consciously I'm like. I, you know, I'm not just doing it for health reasons and doing it just because, uh, you know, I don't like the the, in, the industry. Yeah. Like, you know, keeping all these fucking animals in cages and everything like that. At <laughs> a certain point, I go, ah, I don't want to contribute to that. Well, Although meat is delicious. You're but, in better shape than me, so yeah, there's well, something to it. There's a lot to it. It feels good. Like, I feel better when I eat vegetables all the time. But that's how I, you know, that's how I did it. I, I, I tiptoed my way into it, just like you were saying with the, the alcohol, man. You know, I let it go a little at a time. And What can't we do with baby steps? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be... That fucking cold turkey game. That that cold turkey game's rough. Yeah, that's a rough one. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I definitely don't encourage that that behavior. But it's for to each their own as well. Some people just got to do it. You know, they got to just cut it off and if suffer. It, if it becomes you're going to die by Wednesday if you don't, <laughs> then yeah, absolutely. But you know, this is I, I I like the I like the baby steps. You know, I I've, I've toyed with the vegetarian thing, not not for health reasons, but because of you know the whole meat is murder, and then you know, God, if you if you've ever seen a Morrissey show, yeah. you know, or you know, it's it's fucking horrifying, you know. And um, here's my problem with with why I've never been able to commit to that. Uh, at this age, you know, uh, the keto thing works, the low carb thing works, and it definitely does. And anytime I've I've gone the route, like I record at Tone Factory a lot, and Vinny is, you know, Vinny Casaldo, total full on vegan, like for like a decade or more. Oh. You know, he'll have the occasional, you know, once a year burger, he'll go off the wagon or have cheese or something, but um, but then he goes right back on. Uh, but 
so I'll sort of delve into that if I'm there for a month or two, you know, and sort of immerse myself into the when in Rome culture. And uh, what, what, what bothers me is everything that he eats. It, vegetarianism doesn't necessarily mean you're eating healthy. It just means you're not eating meat. You know, yeah. cake and flour and <laughs> beans and rice and everything that turns me into the fucking Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is yeah. right on that. You know, I, he, he was... Uh, I can remember this one instance. He's like, just, just you know, go go to this vegetarian restaurant early on, and uh, and and I'm like, okay, we'll order out. He goes, they have a they have the the vegan Big Mac. It's like a fake Big Mac. I'm like, all right, all right, I get this thing. It was ungodly, gigantic, and drippy, and delicious. And I'm like, this is the greatest day of my entire life. Uh, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I'm like covered like the kid in the fucking <laughs> spaghetti bowl, you know, uh, uh, wallowing around. And I'm like, this is this is healthy? And he went, fuck no. It's not healthy. It's got three times the amount of calories as a real Big Mac. I'm like, oh, uh, I, I hate myself. I, I, I'm so disillusioned. So that's, yeah. you know, and then that's, and you can eat bread and pasta and everything that's all vegan you know yeah. and oh god that's what destroys me so I end up you know with uh, with a bunless fucking in and out burger and it, it works better for me so I'm not there yeah. yet I, I'd have to learn how to eat vegan healthy or vegetarian yeah I follow um, like Ray Kurzweil and he has a book about um, like you know he's on to the singularity by 2045 we'll be able to put our consciousness into robots and all that bullshit so he has this whole book on how to make it that far and keep awesome. your brain healthy and so like I follow his vitamin regiment uh, and then I also do a lot of his recipes in the book and they're all vegan recipes but it's a lot of like it's vegetables and rice and stuff like that it's not just like you know pastas and all this other shit that you can pile on like last night we had um you know we had a bowl of rice with uh, cucumbers and peppers and avocados and some spinach and it was delicious i mean it's it's really good like that kind of that kind of eating it doesn't have to be tasteless food or like um angela she'll make uh vegetarian sandwiches where we just do it's everything but the meat in the sandwich but it's mm -hmm. just a lot of it you know big chunks of tomato big avocados and and lettuce and onions and all that jazz and you just do, it i think it's delicious honestly but uh, it would come with the education, though, to do it right. Right. It would have to come with a certain degree of study. And yeah, I had to read up on it a lot. Yeah. And I'm always asking my friends, you know, what, what are your different recipes and this and that? Or what was the one I just ran into over at Lazy Dog? I was over, you know, Morpheus. Yeah, I was over with Morpheus doing some TV install stuff. And uh, and he's vegan. He's been vegan for a long time. And uh, and he's he looks fantastic. It, he does look fantastic. Know. I hadn't seen him in two years, and I ran into him at Zia last week. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I'm just like, I just can't even believe he showed me his, his ID, and I won't disclose what his ID says on it, but I'm like, there's no way you're that fucking old, bro. You know? And he's just like, yeah, I've been vegan for, I think, something like 30, 40 years or something like that. He's been vegan most of his life. But we were having, uh, what was it? It's, uh, it's squash noodles and beet balls like beet it's, balls. it's vegan spaghetti and meatballs with like spaghetti and beet, beet balls. balls yeah and so the, and the, the the meatball the meatballs are beets but they have like red dripping out of them and everything when you cut them open and right it was on. delicious and it was all just squash cut up like noodles and beets and carrots and whatever the fuck it was you know but it was delicious man and as it wasn't that whole concept of like eating a ton of carbs and all right, this right, fatty right. stuff yeah because that's that's definitely where it is too a lot of a lot of people end up doing just tons of pastas and you could you know, be a fat motherfucking vegan if you if you put your mind to it oh yeah big time man big time so sure. yeah now now i want to start doing we we started the meditation and the yoga videos for the the podcast because i'm trying to do these mindfulness and like lifestyle videos for the youtube channel mm -hmm. they do well and i'm into that kind of thing it's kind of been my path lately and so we're going to start doing the cooking stuff too where i do like simple like vegetarian and, and vegan recipes and stuff that are actually healthy not just like there's no meat in them so it counts kind of thing how cool yeah so hopefully people can you know grow off of that as well so there was an article that I read, and, you know, as soon as I'm going to recall an article, I don't remember what country it was. I don't remember what invading force it was or what year it was. And, again, 
or if it's even true. But the most impactful article I ever read on uh, health and veganism was there was a country, it was some sort of Nordic or Icelandic country that was invaded by another country, and that other country took the meat for themselves. They were occupied. And uh, there was just this direct correlation when they when, when they were when the citizens of that country were not allowed to have meat anymore for a, a period of years, that their cancer rate went to nothing. Yeah. And then as soon as that invading force left, you know, the cancer rate slowly came back year after year. You can't deny that. Yeah. If it's true. Well, well it it's technically uh, what I've read and like what Ray Kurzweil talks about is um, like he's he's vegan. For longevity purposes, right? Because he talks about uh, this consuming world is so awesome. animal blood. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's getting better every day. But uh, but yeah, he says anytime you eat meat, even if it's cooked or whatever, you're you're uh, you're taking in all that hemoglobin, that animal blood, and that animal blood mixing in with your system is what can cause all these different illnesses and cancers and all this, and activate this kind of cancer-producing genetics. And so he's like, any time you can avoid eating anything that had ever had blood in it, <laughs> you're doing a good I, thing. I get that, but yeah. well, why is that true for us and not true for wolves or any other carnivorous animal species on the planet? Well, they have different digestive systems as well, but uh, also Every single... they get cancer. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they get cancer too, but... Uh, is that... I guess that's true, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, everything right. does. Uh, I'll buy that. Yeah, everything gets cancer, but uh, what's interesting is, like, larger animals don't get cancer. I can't remember the exact thing I was watching about it, but they're just like, shouldn't, like, uh, whales have more cancer based on the reasoning behind cancer because it's, like, mutated cells that aren't dying off. Like, your cells are supposed to replicate so many times and then decay off. And then certain ones just to become like zombie cells. They don't decay off. And then they start reproducing other zombie cells, which is cancer. And, uh, and that's how the whole process starts. So it's like you think things with more cells in their body, like larger animals, would actually produce more cancer. And then it doesn't seem to be the case. In so with bears things. and wolves and carnivores, all if they developed... Uh, forward thinking and opposable thumbs and learn to bake and stuff. Is that yeah. the path that they should be on, like harvesting <laughs> vegetables, you know? that? No, not at all, man. No, it's, uh, I think everything's supposed to live and die and, and you know, like cancer is just a part of that. Like it's, there's definitely, it's definitely a code in the system that's designed to make room for the next generation. You know, Planned it serves obsolescence, a purpose. like our phones. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Everything serves a purpose in this, in this world. I know it sucks from, if you just, if you just look at it from the perspective of me or just humanity, you know what I mean? Like you're like, well, what about this? And what about that? And it's just like, well... There's a purpose for all of it, man. You know, there's definitely logic behind it all, and it's definitely it might suck for humanity, it might suck for me individually, but for the the entire ball of wax that's going on, it, it actually is is meaningful and impactful because we got to die off to make room for the next generation. If we never did, we'd be stacked on top of ourselves so heavily, and it, like Yertle the turtle. Yeah, like Yertle the turtle. Those turtles, and remember Dr. Seuss? Yeah. Or did that get banned? I can't remember. I'm sure it's, everything's banned, you know what I mean? It's like you can't have any kind of opinion that's not uh, dictated by Twitter. And <laughs> uh, it's the worst. It's the worst necessary evil in our lives right now. Yeah, you know, it'll it'll get to its extreme points, which I think it's already hit, and then it starts eating itself alive, and then, you know, hopefully we'll find a balance again where people are allowed to have differences of opinions from each other. It but is you, definitely like a necessary evil, like you are saying. We're pushing a product. Yeah. That's, that's the best way to push your product. Oh, yeah. You know? So I never said it was evil, e evil Mr. Zuckerberg. I love <laughs> you and everything that you stand for. <laughs> oh, did you see the shit the government came out and said, well, I mean, yeah, we do technically tell Facebook what to do and Twitter what to do and Google what to do. I did and, not see that. Yeah. I don't, I don't watch. I don't pay attention to anything. Yeah. Cause like that's going on in the world. Yeah, you know? Trump's, Trump's suing them. And so he's since he's suing Zuckerberg and all the social media outlets, it was about to get revealed that obviously the White House has been told what to, uh, telling them what to say and doing all the whole, you know, where if you said anything negative about Biden, it got blocked. And, and if you said anything good about Trump, it got blocked, basically just controlling the narrative in the, in the, the Democratic direction because that's what they wanted. And now everyone's like, well, that's 
Google and Facebook's right to do whatever they want with their private company. And now it's coming out like, oh, well, no, the government was actually coercing them to do that. Ugh. And the government just came out and announced it. They were just like, yeah, well, I mean, we have been coercing them to do that. Yeah, it's not. And this is why I don't pay attention. I don't want to know these crazy. things. That's why I didn't have kids. I, you know, I'll try to leave the world a better place, but I don't have to be concerned uh, with the fact that it's not going to be a better place, and our next generation is probably going to all die in a fiery wreck. Well, <laughs> that's how it goes, right? The the, the uh, like our grandfathers were just freaking monsters of men, you know? And then they created a better world for their children, which were like the baby boomers, yeah. right? And our parents and my parents. And then uh, and then they created a little bit better world. And then a more idealistic world came about after that. And then all these idealistic dreamers come in and have nothing to give, or nothing to offer and everything to take. And it starts c collapsing in on itself because... That goes in two different directions. Yeah. We're creating a better world and a worse one at the same time. Yeah. A better world with worse people in it. <laughs> Some. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Well, you know what? It is time for a fucking new Ice Age. Let's start over. Yeah, it is. It is actually time, right? I think I was watching a thing by Randall Carlson about the catastrophic event, uh, events that have occurred every like ten to twelve thousand years progressively through the planet over the last. They were to prove it over the last like sixty thousand years or something like that. They're just like, right around this time, <laughs> everything just gets wiped. And we don't know what it is, but it seems to keep happening, and we're right around the corner from it, or we're like right in the middle of it, like standing there waiting for it to happen at this point. I don't know if I'd wanna if I'd wanna see that. Like when I I don't know how how long do you plan on living? Are you into the whole longevity thing? I'm into the longevity thing, but I mean, I definitely don't think I'll live forever. I just think uh, I right. mean, 100, 90, 150 seems really reasonable these days. <laughs> okay, I. I, I'm I'm from the I'll be dead by Wednesday mentality. You oh, know, I, yeah. I didn't think I was gonna make fifty, but you know now I, I I'm I'm doing a better job at it. But I still think like seventy five, you know, uh, seventy five. It, it would be an age that I it wouldn't surprise me if I if if I ended up dying. You know, so I don't think like eighty five, ninety five, one hundred five. But you do, and that's 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 cool. Maybe yeah. maybe I'll be surprised. But like, uh, here's an example. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm going to loosely tie this to whether I want to see the end of the world or not. Um, I'd love to. We, we, uh, I think I'd love to. We, we have, uh, we, we always have these icebreakers, you know, that we would use. Um, I, I opened your show with an icebreaker yeah. when I was doing sound and lighting, you know, different, um, different crew, different set of egos and, you know, peacock feathers, you're walking into whoever's, you know, whatever national act you're dealing with that day. Uh, and you, you did that, right? For a long time. Oh yeah. Okay. So, you know, so, so when you're doing it for like a, like, like a, like a 3000 seater, you know, you got them on the way up or you got them on the way down, right? You know, you, you see, you're, you're not dealing with the Rolling Stones, but you're, yeah, on the way up or the uh, on the way down, where you have the the biggest peacock feathers. So yeah, one of my icebreakers was uh, you know you'd walk in, hi, I, I, I'm such and such. Oh, nice to meet you. Hey, can I get a mic cable? Somebody somebody will ask something some something simple like, oh, can I can I get a mic cable? Or you know you got did you get our stage plot? Oh, so you want to fucking fight me now? <laughs> right. So I said that to you. There's a funny story about that backfiring uh, on me one one time, uh, and I'll tell it later. But uh, the other one was uh, you know if 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 there's tension. You know, 10, 15 minutes, almost right off the bat, you lean in and you go, "Hey, you suck cock." Right? <laughs> that, that was a funny one, but it, but it, but it could go either way. You know, you you, you might freak somebody out, but you, you wait an uncomfortably long time before you start laughing. It was a great icebreaker, but one guy without missing a beat, he was from a. Um, from like an R&B band, you know, they, they've always got like 15 people, and they're all the most amazing musicians you've ever seen. I was like, hey, you, uh, you suck cock? And he went, you know, I haven't. He goes, but when I'm 90, I'm going to give it a whirl. <laughs> and he goes, and just without even thinking, and he goes, and if I like it, man, am I going to be pissed, right? And I thought... What a, what a fucking brilliant answer. I wasted my whole life not sucking cock. So that's how I'm sort of thinking about the, the, so the, the end of the world, you know? Like, I, I, I don't think I'd like it if it happened today, you know? Because uh, cause I, I kind of feel like I'm having a good time right now. There's something to live for. But when I'm 90, I would like to see the end of the world. But that means I have to live to, to 90. So now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't die at 75. 
I don't know. <laughs> it's just way too much to think about on this fucking podcast, man. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I, I, I look at it almost in a, I mean, I, I'm pretty optimistic these days, but the, the whole concept comes from a, a very pessimistic place, which was like, I was partying my ass off till I was 26 turning 27, because I was pretty sure I was going to die by the time I was 27, that whole concept of, uh, you know, a lot of people do. And I was drinking and drugging and, and going as hard as I could. And I was like, it doesn't seem like my body's giving out anytime soon. And I was like, fuck, I bet I'm going to be one of those dickheads who lives forever. Right. Even because I especially didn't want to when I was, you know, younger. I wanted to ride it hard and get the fuck out of here. And that was kind of my life's, like, my, my goal in life, you know. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, that, because I don't want to to live forever i'm gonna be one of those assholes who's fucking stuck here right that's yeah. your hell yeah and so i just kind of feel like yeah and with the the you know the breakthroughs through medical science and the expansion of like the the average lifespan going out every year i mean we're almost at like uh, 80 years of average on an average for people now which is fucking wild and right. it keeps getting you know further out every year so I'm just like, yeah, I mean, God damn it. I'm probably <laughs> going to be stuck here for a while. I'm already <laughs> mentally jotting down uh, that later on I have to look up, up uploading your consciousness. Oh, yeah, man. Get rid of the body, but, you know, yeah. still hang out for as long as you want or forever. Yeah, it's an interesting concept, man. I was actually talking about it on another uh, podcast with my buddy Peter Love, who's way into that kind of stuff, because he wants to live forever, you know, and I'm like... I don't give a shit. I could take it or leave it. I just kind of feel like that's, you know, I'll probably be here for a while. Well, if you're in a machine, you know, and there is a, an, another ap apocalyptic event or, you know, a mass extinction, that's forever. Then then you die there, you yeah. know, presumably, right? Oh, yeah. Well, and, and it doesn't even matter. You know, the sun's going to go out. And, like, we are, we're going to really get out of the solar system. And even if we get out of the solar system, it's like, well, the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy are going to collide together. And even if we survive that, it's like you can't get out of the galaxy. The galaxies are moving away from themselves too fast. So it's the like, whole no one here gets out alive. Yeah. You know, and even if we do, no one gets out of there alive. And even if you, so I'm with you. Yeah. But, it's but like, at least the no end of the world thing. won't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> If Everybody's got to go, man. If your consciousness is in a machine, uh, then let it be at the end of the, the the Milky Way while you're watching the whole thing collapse. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun one, man. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's like that Doctor Who episode. They all come back. I don't know if you watch Doctor Who, but it's no. always random, random sci-fi written by different people every episode. And there's one episode where uh, he goes like four billion years into the future to watch the sun, uh, the sun supernova. And like Earth's been long gone, you know, because the sun's getting it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So Earth was been dead for a while. But all these humans came back after colonizing the planets. And it was like this big, spectacular event. We're going to watch the sun go out, you know, or supernova. And uh, yeah, and it's like, yeah, even if we are around at that time, I mean, it just keeps on progressively. The, the, the goal line could keep getting pushed, but eventually everything's going to there's going to be no more universe. Everything will cold. Uh, what is it called? The the uh, uh, where everything gets too far apart from each other, and so everything don't freezes know out. That. The big freeze, yeah, and because uh, of expansion, everything's just pushing away from each other, and uh, and so eventually, all the stars will stop creating new stars uh, because there just won't be enough uh, space to merge into more stars. You know, like the nurseries will stop producing stars, and then. Five billion years after that or so, all the stars are supernova, and then every, all the matter will start spreading out so far that it's like this big freeze, and the whole universe will just cease. Well, I'm sold. Change of plans. Let's uh, upload our consciousness, and uh, it's a date. I'll, yeah. We'll watch that happen. Dude, Ray Kurzweil, I mean, I don't know if you ever talked No. Uh, yeah, Ray Kurzweil is a trip, man. I made yeah. a mental note. Kurzweil is the name of the keyboard, so I'll be able to remember this later without writing it down. It's, it's the guy who made the keyboard. Right on. Yeah, yeah. He did a bunch of cool inventions like that. But yeah, he does. He has a, um, there's a movie called Transcendent Man that goes into it, and he's really convinced, you know, he's a neuroscientist as well, and he's really into, like, dissecting how the brain works and, and how our thought he's uh, i think 65 now oh, so he's got plenty of time you would think yeah. if he's really into longevity and doesn't get hit by a fucking bus yeah you know, he, he could actually make this happen he's trying as damn as i know he's gonna attempt it man and the one that he always talked that i liked in um in his book uh the singularity is near he talked about uh replacing individual pieces of his brain one piece at a time uh, as opposed to like trying to drop his consciousness into another body because a lot of people are like well that's just a copy of you that's not you that's your copy Con right Con consciousness kind of concept 
Yeah. So, but like if you copied your awareness and then put it into something else, but then you were still alive, right? Then you're technically you and that's just a copy of you. Now, and you're, then, ma- now you're making my head hurt. <laughs> It's all these, it's all these, uh, all these dilemmas, these par, these, uh, what is that? There's just words. There's words in my brain that I'm not pulling out. It's like, it doesn't matter. Your cup is overflowing. Yeah, no, there's, yeah, there's, as you know, sometimes it's hard to pull words out of my brain. That's why, but, that's why I can't turn on the news. You have to pick and choose. Our lives are, our brains are full, right? You know, you can only fit so much in your cup before it starts to spill over. So I don't watch the news. I don't pay attention to politics. Just, I don't, I don't need to, anything like that to occupy any space that I'm currently using. Because it's, it's already decision. fucking full. Yeah. Now, that's a good decision to make, man. Especially now, like politics are a fucking disaster right now. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch a little bit of it like once a week. I'll go dig around and see what's going on. And then for the most part, I'm just like, I don't want to, I don't want to see it. I won't watch, I won't watch any of the, the news news, CNN or Fox or any of that crap. I'll kind of dig around on, online and watch other articles and stuff. And you'll see like 20 people are talking about the same thing in the same way. You're like, I guess that's actually happening. Yeah. Or if you see something on Facebook and you're like, that ah, seems weird. And you'll, you'll, you'll look it up. I'll, I'll, I'll vet something for three or four minutes and I'll be like, oh, no. Still not interested. But. <laughs> I watched this guy on uh, on YouTube. His name's Ryan Long, and he's a hilarious dude, total dickhead, you know, kind of comedian. But uh, he did a stick about uh, about uh, news articles and how they're just completely customized to whatever your opinion is. And so, you know, he's like, uh, well, you know, if you if you support Trump, then here's a dozen articles that's saying everything that Trump does is great. If you hate Trump, here's a dozen articles saying he's the devil and he's going to destroy everything. And every single talking point that be, can be created, there's a, a positive and a negative article for it. And, uh, you know, it's like, what the fuck's real anymore? You know, everything's so biased and you can just go in there and like cherry pick your own opinion out from the news and just kind of live in this bubble of like, I'm so right. I know exactly what I'm talking about. <sighs> Nobody's right. No, nobody knows shit. I definitely don't know shit. That's it's, for sure. It's the worst. Yeah. Just got to let it all go, man. Well, I have changed the subject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it goes now. It goes now, man. <laughs> so actually, uh, you were going to do, uh, let's change the subject hard. You wanted to do a jam on your guitar, man. A jam? You're, you, well, a love song, I believe, is what you said. Oh, right? I could do it. When we were talking on the phone, you're going to sing me a love song, big guy? I would love to sing you a love song. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm good enough for a jam. I, I mean, <laughs> that would imply... That would imply creativity and, you know, other people like smoking pot and, you know, finding a, finding a vibe. But I can do a love song. I, I, I would love that. Okay. I um, would love that very much. Let me grab the guitar for you, buddy. All right. Here. Bring it over to you. Oh. There is a lot of love in this room. I try to spread love, man. I brought you like I don't know what size you are. It was like I'm either. a large. I like, am a large. I brought like youth smalls and youth mediums because you're so skinny. I know. I just got a I got a bigger frame than I'm six two, so it's like I have a medium body but a large large set of shoulders. I brought some uh, some chick shirts for your lady friend. Oh, nice, yeah, Angela. I love that. Oh, is it coming up? Oh, I hear it. I hear it. Oh. Nice. Maybe we'll even uh, we'll give it the quick college tune. I really appreciate you doing a musical number on the show, man. I've been wanting to encourage more musical numbers. Well, be careful before you call it a musical number. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a that's probably a lot more guitar than I need in these headphones. Here anyway, I'll back it off. Mm-hmm. What? I said I will back it off. I'm back, back it off. I got a little Ooh. mixer here. Down. Yeah, down, 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 down. Because yeah, I'm terrible, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the that lesson. is not true. So, uh, all right. So, uh, I don't want to get on a soapbox and get all, you know, lovey and preachy. Uh, but I did write this song for my wife, and it uh, it has a, a special place in my heart. I love it. It's called the love song. You ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the mic away from me, and I'm gonna just listen. I love you with all of my heart and my soul together forever 
With you I'll grow old Well I'm a good man With a big heart of gold But I'm gonna kill your mother I will hide in the closet Catch her by surprise Then I'll stick a shrimp fork In each of her eyes Then I'll stand there and laugh Ha <laughs> ha while she painfully dies Baby, I'm gonna kill your mother Well, I've never done A bad deed in my life I love all God's creatures Especially you, dear My wife But the voices keep telling me Pick up the knife And ram it into your mother Again Again and again Tonight while she's sleeping I'll jimmy the lock And I'll smash in her head With a big fucking rock Then I'll dance on her grave While I'm stroking my cock Baby, I'm gonna kill your mother Well, I don't mean to sound crude I don't mean to sound blunt But baby, your mother's a big fucking Asshole. I will lurk in the shadows till I get my cue. Then I'll rip start my chainsaw and cut her in two. And on the walls in her blood, write a love note to you. Babe, I love you and I killed your mother. Yes, I love you and I killed your mother. That self-centered, arrogant bitch. <laughs> that was really from the heart. I don't like that oh, woman at all. I mean, my wife is such a sweetheart, so but good. man, her mom, what a cunt. Oh, that's fantastic, man. <laughs> I loved that song. Okay. Well, I'm glad you did. What a beautiful, beautiful song you've written there, is, sir. Is is that our closer? What are we doing? We can close with that. <laughs> totally, man. I can dig that. Yeah. We've been going for an hour. <laughs> you want to wiggle us? Let's do that. All right. Awesome. It is. A, it's, it's, it's a fun closer. That's I mean, a it, fantastic closer. It'll leave everybody with just a little bit of love in their hearts. Right? I'm going to snip that into a little video and post <laughs> that shit on social media by itself, man. Right, that well. was fucking awesome. Well, you can get the message out, you know. I <laughs> mean, if, uh, if we can change the lives of, you know, just one human being that uh, happens to be related to my life, my wife, then, <laughs> <laughs> then, I, then I've, done, I've done my job here. And by change the life, you mean remove it. Well, yeah. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people will, uh, will relate to that song. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to help a lot of people. Well, you, you, know, know. you know, I'm glad I, I'm glad I could help. I'm glad I could be there for everybody. It was it was very beautiful. I, I appreciate it, you bringing that on. It's not on any of these CDs. I brought you a whole no? fucking t pile of music, um, dude. I love it. So I love it so much. You can uh, you can paper your birdcage with them. Um, no, I will be listening to them. Here we go. Look at but like that. Boom. You can you can give them away to everybody you hate. Um, lots and lots of stuff here. <laughs> we just we just keep making songs, and I don't know why we do it. I think. Uh, I think if we were the last people on earth, we would still make songs and record them and just, you know, be our own biggest fans. But, uh, All right. Hmm. Would you like this right here so people can see it? Can they see it or are the light's going to blast it? Oh. oh, volume one. But the new one, volume two, go buy that and uh, share it with everyone you hate and right. ruin their day. We'll put them all up there. Oh, yeah. Oh. This one's Dirty Pretty Things. I remember when this happened. That's Nicole, Jeff's girlfriend. Oh, yeah? Mm. And then what's this one called? What would Ginger do? So, uh, do you know her? She's fun as fuck. Do I know her? Ginger Lynn. The name sounds familiar. She looks she, familiar. She was do like, I know her? She was like, like back w in the 80s when if you were a porn star, you were a fucking star. You were a movie star, right? Yeah. And that was back when they were just making you know, tons and tons of money. Ginger Lynn was like, you know, back in the day, she was as big as it got, right? Oh, okay, she's a porn star. Yeah, oh, and yeah. Uh, 
And then I was watching this E! True Hollywood story, you know, of Ginger Lynn. You know how they steer those things, but then, you know, drugs and Charlie Sheen and... But then she, you know, she got, got into mainstream movies and then she went back into porn and she was making money and she's... But then... Drug. Like like that that turning point in all of the E True Hollywood stories was like nine times in that one, and you're like, <laughs> oh, oh. but you know, but by, by the end of it, you know, you're like, well, fuck it, you know. I, I saw a bumper sticker that said, "What would Jesus do?" And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to offend anyone uh, that that is, that is a believer in such things, but life didn't really work out for that dude. You know what I mean? I oh, mean, yeah. it, that had ended very, very badly. But every time it ended badly for Ginger, it was still the time of her fucking life. <laughs> and it was just awesome. And I'm like, you know what? What would Ginger do? Let's, let's, let's do that. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, 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 I don't know. That was a concept of that record. I love it. And then uh, I asked her if I could use this picture. And that was like back in, that was a long time ago. And then we became friends. Uh, and now she lives here. And she is a painter now and, and a good oh, one. So and she, she did this one? She painted the cover for that. Oh. I like that. That's kind of like uh, Angela's art, man. We have some of it hanging in the uh, the living room out there. Mm. She does uh, abstract art just like this. And she's doing great now. What a what a great, I say, what a great kid, you know, because I, I still think of everybody <laughs> back when when they were immortalized in our brain, you know. Oh, like yeah. when we re rewatch Star Wars, it's still awesome because our our 10-year-old minds formed all of those opinions, you know. Uh, but, you know, she's she's probably my age or a little bit older, but she's a she's a great woman. That's awesome. I dig it, man. What would Ginger do? What would Ginger do? And uh, I don't know. If you'd really sort of dig into her anthology, what wouldn't Ginger do? <laughs> that's, that's so funny. She said that to me once. She said, what wouldn't Ginger do? Oh, that's brutal. When, when we were talking about the, uh, on the record, she's just, got, she's just, a, just such a great sport. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta be, man. You're gonna go out and do the uh, the porn lifestyle. That's a hard lifestyle, and like your family bails on you, and everyone fucking scarlet letters your ass. Yeah. Like you're just such a horrible person because you had sex on camera. Mm. It's like, man, everybody's everybody's doing their own thing. Better than politics. Better than way better than politics. Oh man, yeah. So well, that's uh, we were said we were gonna wrap it up. All we're right, still chatting. But uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do uh, this this little outro dingus that I'm going to do here. Right? All, right. All right. So I go, uh, well, how does this work? I go, hey, thanks for watching To the Fulls with Jason Froberg, bud. I love you. Click that subscribe button. Give us a like. Ring the bell. Check us out on social media. Check Patrick out on social media. Say hi to your mother-in-law. Say hi to your mother-in-law. I'll have all the links in the uh, description below. And, uh, yeah, this has been To the Fullest. Peace. So long. Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.